minus 15 seconds. Vehicle supply pressures. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And welcome, independent researchers, skeptics, and all of humankind, shadow citizens. Shadow citizen will explore the shadows of an alternate reality. Your host, Rachel L. McIntosh. to another episode of Shadow Citizen. I love that theme song. I love it. I'm so glad we brought it back from the crypt. Anyhow, today we're going to be interviewing somebody who ran for president in the 2020 election. I'm really excited to have this person on because when I looked who was running for president, all you could ever see was Trump or Biden. And there were over 2,000 people running for president and we never got to hear from them. This is one of the reasons why we have Shadow Citizen, so we can get to the, the real story. I think a lot of Shadow Citizens don't trust the mainstream media, and they want what the real story is. So I, that's why I brought this whole thing back. And I want people to be able to communicate with each other and figure out what's going on and how to fix the problem, as opposed to pointing figures at the problem. We want to try to solve the problem. So that's why I'm excited to have Jolie Diane, presidential candidate for the United States of America, on with me today. Jolie, thank you for being on the show with me. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. Okay, right on. Now, I do have to tell people that we do know each other because you've been on the show before when it was Shadow System 2.1, when it was just audio. So this whole being on screen together is a new thing. And um, at that point, you would come on the show. We were talking about geoengineering. And you had told me to put a pan out in my front yard and get a rainwater sample because I didn't really get what was going on. You know, I was kind of very skeptical. So I put the Pyrex pan out. Next thing you know, the test results come back. I've got barium, strontium, aluminum, and other stuff in my water. And then I was hooked. So I'm so glad you're back and that you're running for president. And the website that I saw that you had up listed geoengineering as one of your core principles of your whole campaign. I think there were four of them. And tell us, first off, what the website was that I what it was jdfor2020.com. And it's still live? Yeah, it's still live. It'll, it'll still be going. Uh, there's a lot of content on there that people might be interested in researching. So we want to leave that up, uh, give people a chance to go through it and do the deeper dive. All right, cool. I think they should. All right, JD for 2020. And the four main pillars of your campaign are? Right. Uh, so we have zero geoengineering, uh, which would be tackling the weather modification, the atmospheric interventions, uh, very polluting and destructive for the environment. Uh, then there's zero 5G, which would be the... Um, infrastructure, the, the wireless infrastructure that hasn't been regulated. Um, and those are microwave transmissions, and that is uh, harmful for the environment and uh, human health. Then there's zero mandatory vax, which is about medical freedom and health freedom and safety. And there's zero GMO, which would be uh, tackling the food supply um, issues regarding the um, modification, the genetic modification of food. So um, it's basically pollution if you if you just look at it uh, at the very most basic level. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to tackle pollution in these um, places. Okay. Now I saw the website, it said zero party. And I guess it's because all these websites start with zero, but is that is that a political party? Is it a real party? Um, well, the thing is, we wanted to be unaffiliated with any political party. So, yeah, it is playing off of the zero sites, 
uh, but we wanted to emphasize uh, tackling the actual matters of greatest significance and urgency. So uh, yeah, you, you could start a zero party, I suppose it would be a good idea, uh, but mainly we're focused on people power and the issues at hand. Those specific issues. Now, how do you get to run for president if you aren't with a political party? Well, as you said, uh, 2,000 people ran for president. Um, yes. I think anyone can run for president. Um, I saw that there was no one standing for protecting the environment. And that's one of my biggest issues. And, you know, human health and safety, that's the other big issue. So since there was no one doing it, I just decided I would do it. Now, you, you, it's not like you came out of nowhere doing this. You, you've been going to around, around to different states to help people. Because I know you, after this rainwater thing in Rhode Island, I was like, Jill, I think so, Jilly, what do I do? And she, you came trotting out here. Do, 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 and you helped put together with me and a bunch of people the Rhode Island Geoengineering Act. And that changed my life. And it changed lots of people's lives here in Rhode Island. And... I would, how, how are you, which states are you going around to? How are you doing this? Like, tell us first off, which states you're at. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, really lucky to support these types of efforts in many states. And I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget uh, West Virginia, New Mexico, Oregon, Rhode Island, California, Maine, Texas, New York, Illinois, New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, Maine, Kentucky, Vermont, Maryland, and Connecticut. Wow. And how do you do that? Do you drive around, fly around? Like how, how, how do you do this? Well, I guess. With, with the COVID business, um, I'm not able to uh, drive around and, and stuff as I was before. So basically it's shifted over to um, meetings online and uh, just, you know, we kind of just have shifted our parameters a little bit and doing PowerPoints and presentations online. So, yeah, I mean, it hasn't slowed us down any, you know, if anything, we have more meetings and we're, we're connecting with more people. So, um, and we'll continue to do so. Now, what drives you to do this? Because a lot of people care about this, you know, they want a clean atmosphere. They don't want to have mandatory vaccinations, but they don't do anything? What drives you to do this? I, I just love nature. I, I love the, you know, America and, and the people. And I just didn't want to sit around and wait and see what happened. So I'm just kind of the person I, you know, I didn't really think about, you know, if I could win or, you know, it's just like, this is something that needs to be handled and I'm going to do whatever I can to support people and, and handle these problems. So, um, that's kind of where I started and, you know, I'm just going to see it through. How long have you been doing it so far? Uh, well, I started full time in 2015. Um, I, before that, I, I realized there were problems and I tried to go the, the route, the, the traditional route where you call your representatives, um, you write the letters. And I just saw, you know, I'm not getting anywhere with this. I, I feel like I need to go in person. So I stopped everything I was doing in California and I went to the East Coast uh, to DC and, you know, just, I wanted to go into those offices in the Capitol and which I did and with other people. And uh, so yeah, 2015 is really when I started full time. And once I started and I saw the huge problems, I thought, yeah, I need to spend all my time doing this. Okay, so you're almost, so you're a lobbyist uh, for the people. It's not like um, you're paid to do this. You're no, I'm a I'm a citizen. I guess it would be a citizen lobbyist because, like you said, I don't get paid to do this. Um, so um, I work with teams in the different states, okay. and um, yeah, it's just like a lot of time, a lot of research. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it's our it's our nation that's involved. It's the future of the planet that's involved, and. Yeah, there is no other time than now. So uh, now you did say a lot of research. And I do have to say at that website, JD for 2020, um, there is copious amounts of research. And when I say research, I don't mean conspiracy theory stuff. I mean, right out of government documents, 
serious research about all these different things you're talking about. Um, and I'm really astounded by how much is there. And if people go to that website, they should go up to the search function and type in a topic. And if you're interested in it and relates to something that Jolie's been studying, she'll have a lot of information, like firsthand information for you to look at. Um, how, what were you doing before this? Well, you know, I'm, I, thanks, Rachel. Um, basically, we, what we're trying to do is get the source documents and accurate information. So you won't see any of my opinion and speculation. There's a huge paper trail involved in, in all of these topics. And all I try to do is um, just find those source documents so that other people can look through them and, and really do the research that's involved because it's just endless. Um, lots of budgets, lots of coordinated reports from the government, lots of university studies and peer review materials. So it's all there. Uh, but basically, you know, many times it's been cast aside in the realm of conspiracy because people, you know, don't think it's real. Um, but it's real. And, you know, the, the first way to solve it and, and end these problems is to get familiar with the topic. So I hope yeah. that all I know is that after getting involved with the geoengineering thing and putting together 10 three inch binders worth of documentation, there's nothing, this is, there's nothing conspiracy about this. This is a real life thing. Our government's been doing it for a long time. And I think you're absolutely correct in taking it this route to, you got to do it legislatively, I believe. I, you know. So I think, I think what you're doing is excellent. But, I think we were both surprised that there was no law that yeah. was protecting the environment and the atmosphere. Uh, there's just big budgets to continue with the so-called research and meteorology. So yeah, definitely a good topic for people to try to get familiar with and, and learn as much as you can. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, because once you start figuring out that this is a real thing and how come I didn't know it was a real thing? How come everybody doesn't know it's a real thing? why isn't anybody talking about it? That's when it kind of falls into shadow citizen land. Like yeah. you're the outsider and everybody's like, oh, what is she? Like, you know, people, what is she talking about? She's, she's one of those conspiracy people. No, 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 no. This is, this is a real thing. And it's exciting when you start going down and doing all of that research, you're like, holy, this is the most well-documented conspiracy theory ever. Yeah, it's, it's really like, analysis. <laughs> There's no, there's no theorizing about it. It's just no. analyzing the facts and saying, wow, it's really unbelievable that there's no laws or regulations around this. So again, it goes back also to its military programs, a lot of it. And so they were able to sidestep regulation and, and oversight. And so that's what we're really trying to do essentially is, is just place um, really uh, strong regulations there so that we protect the atmosphere, we protect the environment and human health. And it's, you know, it's, it's very basic. So yeah, I think it's a lot of common sense, like, like you're saying, and, and once people just recognize that, they can go and look through the materials themselves and find even more materials. Cause like I said, it's just endless. Yeah, it's nonstop. It really is. It's, it's kind of, it's <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> it really is. Um, what, what I was asking though, before you got, kind of, and you're such a good researcher, I just have to say that, before you got slung into this research realm, because I'm pretty sure when you're like 10 years old, you can say, oh, I want to research geoengineering. What would you grow, what did you grow up and do before you got into this research? Well, actually my parents are researchers. So it's, you know, I guess it's kind of true. The apple never falls too far from the tree. Um, but at any rate, um, before I started this full time, I was actually a music teacher and musician and a uh, caregiver for pets and people and uh, spent most of my time, you know, in nature. Um, and so this is very, um, a very new realm, but I, I do stay up, you know, pretty late. Uh, each night, um, 
researching and trying to dig through more materials, again, to give people accurate information, because I think that that's what we're really dealing with is the fact that we have a pre-scripted narrative most of the time, and the media is with the, the corporate interests, the technocracy. Uh, so, you know, uh, a lot of what we're doing is trying to educate ourselves and, uh, and, and find that path out. Yeah. Speaking of, you said technocracy. We're having um, a man, Patrick Wood, on the show Amazing. pretty soon. And um, I, I know that you had mentioned there was a group that he was involved with. Yeah, absolutely. There's several groups doing amazing work. Um, and his is one of them, um, Citizens for Free Speech. And so I know he's organizing and, you know, working to really help get people organized and taking charge. So that would be a great um, group to go explore and get involved in. And also there's a couple others, Make Americans Free Again with Dr. Pam Popper. And she's leading the way uh, with efforts um, in Ohio with Andrew Rents, who's a lawyer, tackling, um, uh, give placing lawsuits to tackle this state of emergency, so-called state of emergency that these states have been using in order to create policies that are unconstitutional. So make Americans free again. You can get involved in your state and tackle the state of emergency. Um, and so I'd recommend that. And also um, the healthy American with Peggy Hall. She's doing phenomenal work, getting people out of these masks. You do not need a mask. Uh, the masks are harmful if you look at the science um, and they also have not stopped any of the so-called spread. So, um, you know, I think the, the key also, you know, is, is just getting involved, you know, whatever your issue is, whatever, you know, is important to you, we need you to show up and, you know, just be there, uh, on the, uh, you know, getting involved with the other people. Now, oh, it's snowing again. It's snowing and I'm taking a sample of it right Get now. A sample. It's gonna get tested, it's gonna get tested. Oh, uh, here's, if you were president, let's say you got elected this year, say 2020, the inauguration would be you getting sworn in. What would you say, or what would, how would the, future? How would the vision of America look for you? Like, what would you do? Well, first of all, we would be open for business. We would not have any more lockdown and, and strangling the economy. So, so that's the first thing we have to get back to work. Um, and also something that I, that I'm really excited about is, is something called a resolution settlement. And so what this is, is every man, woman, and child would get a hundred thousand dollars and this would be federal money, you know, instead of us spending money overseas and um, for every other country but our own, it would be we would be investing in the people so that they would have an opportunity to pursue life, liberty, and happiness and be entrepreneurs, start that business, take that class. You know, some people might blow through the $100,000, you know, uh, we don't know. But at, at the whole, I think a lot of people would have that brand new start. And so um, that, that would be one of the things that would be, you know, something that we could make a new start, unite America. It would be everybody would get it, every American. Um, and, and this would allow us to, to go down a path of, uh, towards prosperity. And uh, as Catherine Austin Fitz has pointed out, um, you know, the government has lost uh, trillions and trillions of dollars um, and, and that's what we need to do is, is reprioritize spending so that we're investing in America and investing in Americans. That sounds, at first it's like, oh, the government's gonna give me $100,000 and people are like, oh, why are we handed it? It's like, no, it's not a special handout. No, we're getting our totally. money back. We're getting our money yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, they took the money, they've been spending it on wars, they've been spending it on programs. Look at the CARES Act was just, you know, they shut down the economy so people couldn't work, you know, so it's not, it, it, we deserve this settlement. Every American deserves yeah, this Yeah, and it w I think it would make an equal playing field for people. No, and if every single person, man, woman, child, this is your American gift. Mm -hmm. You not only do you have the most liberty of anybody on the planet, you have the right and the financial know-how now to make something happen. That's exactly. amazing. I love that. I love exactly. that. That's really kind of, that would be the biggest 
financial experiment I think that ever happened. I would love to see that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we've yeah. been just going so down that's, the same road. That's the first thing. What well, I know you have other things you want to try. Yeah, to absolutely. Well, there's industries just waiting to happen. For example, recycling would be a phenomenal inter- industry so that we could start restoring the, the earth and clean up our our mess and and create things out of it like building materials so i know in california we had tremendous recycling programs where you could recycle anything and even those hazardous substances like and paints and chemicals and stuff and start start cleaning up basically so so that would be one thing to get back in balance with with the environment and clean up nature and then also legalize marijuana you know hemp for fuel and just about everything um solar power we should be you know once we stop blocking the sun we'll have the opportunity to really harness the solar energy uh and so there's a lot of things with with harmonizing with nature that we could do to get on track with energy um so so that would be another one and then also there's all kinds of um, concepts. For example, a high schooler back in 2008 invented this battery, uh, a water-based battery that you could run a car on almost forever. And so you would have zero hazardous emissions um, and then, you know, but you would, you know, we'd still be able to go around because, you know, we love, we love going around and, and, and driving and this and that, but again, we can clean it up so that we can be in harmony with nature and not polluting constantly. And also nurturing, uh, these great ideas and the entrepreneurship, uh, for, for Americans. So yeah, that's also an exciting avenue. And there's probably lots of other ideas that people have, um, and, and we can go full speed ahead with that. Uh, now, did we already discuss this? I know you go to states. Did we already discuss states or now? Yeah, I think we did. Um, All right. Did, did you name them? I think we did, but I can name them again. Um, <laughs> name them again. <laughs> yeah, because there's this. This is a beautiful country and so many wonderful people. Uh, so, West Virginia, New Mexico, Oregon, Rhode Island, California, Maine, Texas, New York. Illinois, New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, Maine, Kentucky, Vermont, Maryland, and Connecticut are so- Okay, all right, so here we go. Even if we said this twice, I think this is really important because that means there's a crop of people in each one of those states who knows who you are, what you're doing, and hopefully shares this message and shares the zero party idea. That would be fantastic. Um, now, what do you think uh, is currently the most pressing thing that we have to do as shadow citizens? Well, we need to get involved. We don't want to follow the leader uh, model anymore. What we need is to get local. And I think, like I mentioned before, Dr. Popper's idea of really tackling this state of emergency, putting in a lawsuit in your state, uh, because there is no emergency and they're using the, the COVID business as an excuse, as a coup d'etat to bring in a digital currency, track and trace, um, all these things that are totally anti-American. So I think that, you know, the people are the solution and, you know, whatever your topic is, whatever your interest is, we need you Um, and, you know, and connect. There's so many good people, like you said, on both sides of the aisle that we want to stop the divide and conquer and see ourselves as Americans. Okay. All right. Jolie, thank you so much for being here with me today. It's my, been my you. absolute pleasure and my honor to be with somebody who's so committed to saving the United States of America. And um, I really hope everybody goes to JD4, it's F-O-R 2020, and looks at the communications that she did. She has them typed out and also saved as, I think it's MP3s or MP4, so you can listen to them. Um, and they're only like five minutes long or so. And it'll give you an overview of what she stands for and the, the things that are pressing, <laughs> at least in this past political election. Uh, and then, of course, you said the new website is J- jdfor2024.com. 
and we're just about to get up and rolling. We're, we're up, but we'll be rolling pretty soon. So please contact us if you want to get involved in your state. And, you know, I want to just thank everybody that's been working so hard, like I said, on, on all different um, realms and, and both sides of the aisle. And, you know, yeah, let's figure out what we can do to work together. And thank you, Rachel, for hosting this wonderful show. And, you know, best of luck on that. I'm so glad that you're back up and rolling. So am I, actually. I really am. I didn't realize how much I missed it. So I'm glad I'm back, too. It's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. Hey, thank you so much, Jolie, and everybody. We'll see you the next episode. <laughs> Bye. Shadow Citizen with Rachel L. McIntosh.